So we're not far from the stand that had not had any management activity. And this is an area where I sometimes bring students and I, I ask them to look around and say, does this look like there's been management activity recently? And often students say that there hasn't, uh, which is not right, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, if you look at this, think about what's, what's different. What do you see that looks different in this stand compared to the one that we were in a few minutes ago? Here, I'll, why don't you pause for a moment and just see if you can write a few things down. So hopefully you notice a few differences here. Uh, it's much more open here. That might not be so apparent from your view since you kind of lose some of the three dimensions when you're just watching on a regular video. Uh, but hopefully you also notice that it's brighter here. It's, it's quite a bit more open, so there's a lot more light. And you should have probably also noticed the vegetation. There's a lot more vegetation here. And this is actually a little bit of an open spot in front of us. But hiking up here from the road was, a, was much more challenging in this stand than the previous stand. Not because the vegetation was very tall, but just because it's very dense. There's kind of dense cover of vegetation across the forest floor. So it can be kind of hard to see pits and logs and other things on the ground. So you have to watch your step a little bit more. Um, I saw a lot of things like hemlock here, red huckleberry, salal. I saw a lot of trailing blackberry, uh, sword ferns. So, so pretty continuous vegetation cover. So now that we've talked about these differences a little bit, so we know the stand is more open and there's a lot more light coming through and we can see that and we also see evidence of that light coming through by having a really robust understory layer. So Cheryl, can you talk a little bit about the management of this stand and how it differs from the previous stand we were in? You bet. Okay, so this is a, a stand that has been commercially thinned, so that is a management decision that's been made for silvicultural purposes. Uh, it's a way to give more growing space to the more valuable trees, and we did that by um, a prescription that we've um, developed that works quite well. We're removing between 40 and 45 percent of the basal area, and that was fairly recent. That was done here about eight years ago. Um, you know, because we're in a coastal rainforest, uh, you know, we're on a, a relatively moist and nutrient-rich site, the understory vegetation responds quite quickly. So this is, you know, the development that you see um, over about the last eight years. You know, there's, there's more diversity of understory vegetation and it's, it's just, it's grown taller and thicker. And so temporarily though, because you see in a thinning, um, you know, regeneration is not the objective. It's a stand tending intervention. It's designed to give more growing space to the trees that we've um, left behind. And they're, they're now more spaced out. And hopefully you can see that looking around, there's more space between the trees. But again, these trees are relatively young for this species. So hemlock, cedar, Douglas fir, you know, 70 to 80 years old. Uh, they have uh, you know, lots of uh, time in the future on a longer rotation to expand their crowns, to grow taller and thicker, and to become you know, more highly valuable, uh, higher um, log grade uh, you know, tree sizes. And so that's what we're aiming for here. And when they're doing that over the years to come, what's going to happen is the crowns are going to close again overhead. You know, so we're going to have canopy closure and, and, you know, move back to uh, what's a, a higher density, a, a more full occupancy of, of this site. So temporarily, there's an opportunity to get some understory and that can have a mm -hmm. whole lot of benefits too. That can be good for biodiversity, it can be good for, it can look very nice for recreation and aesthetics. People enjoy seeing these kinds of mm -hmm. forests, um, you know, they, they look more pleasing because you can look into them and you can see much further and they don't look so dense and dark. Um, and it can be great for a wildlife habitat if, um, if you have um, you know, browsing or, or grazing animals. So this is great for bears, um, ungulates, you know, many other kinds of mammals and birds. And you, so you said this is about 10 years ago? About eight, 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 eight years, years ago, ago here. Okay. And this yeah. is about a, an 80 year old stand? Yeah, so. yeah. So you get a very fast response mm -hmm. here because of the kind of climate and the, the, you know, kind of the rich soils in this location here. Yeah, and I think in this particular stand, I think from, from the general public's perspective, people who may not be familiar with forestry practices would probably look at this forest and not realize, they may not realize that there's been management oh, activity they, here they, recently. They look at this and they think this looks very natural. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a bonus. That, that's great from our point of view. 
because um, recreational values here are really important. We're very close to an urban mm -hmm. interface, and, and people love to come into the forest for relaxation and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a research forest, you allow uh, some access to mm -hmm. the forest. We for, encourage for it, the yeah, public for... yeah, mainly for hiking here. Uh -huh. So thinking to the future of this stand, so obviously, um, if I look up right now, I see there's there's a fair amount of light coming in between the crowns. So over time, those crowns will expand and and start to fill up, uh, fill in the gaps in that canopy. Do you expect that you might come in here for a thinning again in the future, or what what might the next twenty five or fifty or seventy five years of this stand look that like management is, wise? Yeah, that is an option for future managers on a very long rotation. You could come in and thin it again. So we are not at the you know what I would say the minimum um, sort of spacing for for you know a, a very um, long-term uh, older stand uh, that's fully mature because this is early mature this isn't fully <laughs> mature fully mature for a stand like this we're talking 200 250 years and we're, we're we're not looking necessarily to a rotation that long but what we are looking at is a longer rotation here where we would not come back and do another um, either thinning or final cut that'll be for a future manager to mm -hmm. decide but we wouldn't be coming back here uh, for about 25 years after a commercial thinning. that's okay. the prescription we're using right now okay and uh, if you project the sizes of these trees over time um, ideally, uh, we would leave these for about a 150-year rotation. Okay. You get very high-grade logs that would be suitable for milling large timbers to support our sawmill operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think one thing that's kind of important to point out with thinnings is that you're not necessarily generating more biomass or, or more growth. It's that you're taking that, that productivity in that sand and concentrating it into fewer trees. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this may not be exactly true everywhere, but I know if you have a stand that's unthinned and a stand that's thinned, often they'll, they'll put on similar amounts of biomass over time, but in that stand that you that you don't thin, you have that biomass split up among more trees, and so they tend to be a little bit smaller. So from, a, from an ecological perspective, there's not necessarily a huge argument for thinning, although as you did say, it, it provides perhaps forage for ungulates or, or other bears, but from a, a timber management uh, perspective, by creating one larger tree that's going to be more valuable than two or three smaller trees that total to the same volume. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And left alone, it will thin itself, but mm -hmm. it'll just be happen happen over a much longer mm -hmm. time span. And so we can we can sort of speed up the process by thinning. Okay. Good. And is there um, I, this is probably a little bit off topic, but as far as the the timber markets uh, around here right now, is there a certain kind of range of of sizes of logs that are uh, especially valuable or especially in demand at the moment? Well, you really can't go lo uh, wrong with your, your larger uh, mm -hmm. western red cedar because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of substitution for cedar. Cedar's been in high demand historically and it, it tends to be you know, typically about uh, you know at least double the value of of the other, like the next closest species, which would be the Douglas fir. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for cedar poles, cedar house logs, or for cedar mill timbers. So to, to get a, a gang log is great. Um, Can you, you know, explain what a gang log uh, is? Oh, well, it's uh, it's just um, a, a smaller size saw log, but mm -hmm. to get into what they call the merch grade, which is a larger size saw log, um, which has the, the sufficient quality to give you a, a good, um, you know, a timber from an aesthetics and also mm -hmm. from um, a structural standpoint, um, that would be ideal because those are very, very high value logs and they're, they're in demand and you know, no one knows that what the future is going to bring, but we see that as being something that will continue to hold value very long into the future. Okay. And we mustn't ever forget either that um, you know, um, this is traditional unceded territory of um, indigenous peoples, uh, First Nations, and the cedar are incredibly important. Um, they have a very, very high value for many, many purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the First Nations aspect in forestry and in land management um, is a, a really big part of our thinking too. And, uh, you know, the, the really large cedar that would be needed for those cultural purposes mm -hmm. are, you know, they're, they're harder to find mm -hmm. um, in many local areas now, but, but they can be regrown for the future. Mm -hmm.